Christ is risen. His death was not the end. Because on Good Friday, all looked lost. Jesus of Nazareth endured a painful, ignominious death alongside two thieves. The onlookers abused him. His most faithful followers, his inner core of disciples, all but one, shrank into hiding. His grief-stricken mother and a few women stood at the foot of the cross along with the Apostle John. And the sky turned dark and there was a sombre, eerie silence. So on Good Friday, all looked lost. However, there was one moment. One of the thieves crucified alongside Jesus turned to him and he made this simple request. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Today you will be with me in paradise. In the desperation of his lot, when his crimes led him to dying on the cross, when death faced him, he turned to Jesus. His word, very simply asking for mercy, turned into a promise, a promise of salvation. Jesus did not hesitate. His response was immediate and absolute. Today you will be with me in paradise. Here in these words, Jesus is revealing what he deeply understood of what was taking place. He understood the meaning, the purpose, and the final outcome of his death. Jesus died that each one of us may be able to join him in eternity. This is what his death was about. And this is the promise that is offered to each one of us today as we celebrate his resurrection from the dead. Because his death was for our sake and his resurrection was for our sake. His death was the supreme act of atonement for all the wickedness and evil and depravity that sadly touches and influences the human condition. But his resurrection ushers in the undeserved gift of eternal union with God in the utter bliss of heaven. And it was given to this repentant thief in a word. There were no conditions attached, no questioning about his unworthiness. All the repentant thief needed to do was what he did. He humbly asked for mercy. And no doubt, this request for mercy flowed from a heart that, was a re that w realized that their way of life had been one away from God, not towards God. He knew his sinfulness. He had a genuine sorrow for the path that he had taken in life. But in that moment, on the cross, he looked at Jesus dying beside him and said, Remember me. And Jesus said, You will be with me in paradise. It's true, isn't it, that there remains in the heart of each one of us a 
longing for eternity, a longing for a final place of peace, of joy, of happiness. Because we know that these experiences are so fleeting in this earthly life. Each person deep within themselves longs for life beyond death. And deep within each one of us, there is this sense that life here on earth is only a journey and it does not end in death. That there is eternal life and that soul lives even though the body dies. In death, the soul leaves the body and passes into the realm of the eternal. And there, the soul meets the all-holy God, the divine presence. And there is this moment of encounter which is also a moment of reckoning. But mercy awaits those of repentant spirits like the thief on the cross. Just as the death of Jesus, which we commemorate on Good, on Good Friday, reminds us poignantly that each one of us will have a moment in which we too will die. And so too, today's celebration, the celebration of the resurrection of the Lord, proclaims that upon our death, we will be taken up into the fruits of Christ's resurrection. This profound reality that we celebrate today finds a very particular expression for us right back at the moment of our baptism. Because when we're baptised, we appropriated the salvation that Christ won for us by his death and resurrection. When St Paul talks about what happens to us when we're baptised, he says, we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. See, baptism is a dying. It's a dying ultimately to self. They'll say, I will not live for myself alone. I will live for God. I will live for Christ. There is a dying associated with our baptism. But that dying is precisely that we might live. So the Christian shares in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection at the moment of his baptism. This has been uh, quite boldly and in some ways provocatively expressed by one of the great fathers of the church, a man called Saint Athanasius, who lived in the fourth century. And he says, God became man so that men might become gods. There's a profound truth in this. In, in our theology, it's described as the doctrine of the theosis. The theosis was, is a process by which a person is transformed and united so completely with God that the person becomes by grace what God is by nature. St Peter talks about the idea that when we're baptised, when we become Christians, we share in the divine nature. God enters into us. This is the dignity that we have as Christians. That's why St Paul can say that we've become sons and daughters of God by our baptism. And so we can cry out with great affection and gratitude, Abba, Father. We've come into a life in God, a life of grace. St Paul says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Heaven's blessings 
have flowed in upon us when we were baptised. So when we are baptised, we are now living under the blessing of God. So my brothers and sisters, today when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we realise that we are already caught up in the resurrection of Christ. It's not something just awaits us at the end of life. Here on earth, now as we live our lives, we're being fashioned and prepared for heaven, for final union with God. In a wonderful chapter in St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, St Paul, in speaking about the dignity that we have, says, and if we are children, we are heirs as well. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so that we might share his glory. Our life now, these short years that are given to us, will come to an end, the moment of our death. But that moment is also the moment which we are drawn into the power and the glory of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The moment of our death, what we celebrate today, has immediate effect upon our lives. St John says, and we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. My brothers and sisters, at our death, we will meet the risen Christ. If our hearts are oriented towards him, if there is a genuine repentance within our hearts and spirits, we will be drawn up into the glory of life that Christ won by his resurrection.